Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and happy Sunday. Whew. <laughs> Folks, I have been on a whirlwind behind the scenes really gosh, really since my mom's diagnosis, which was back in like August, but more so, I mean, that was really more personal, but things ramped up with the, with Tomcat stitchery to kind of decide the things after the first of the year. I am tired. <laughs> I'm equally parts tired and excited about everything that's happening on the channel. It's a very weird thing. Um, but one of the big things that I have been working on behind the scenes that you guys found out this week was that I was in, um, asked to do a sew along for the newest cashmere pat pattern, which is the Canton Moto Jacket. And I, um, I did that. I got all that up and created two beautiful Cantons. If you didn't see that, that was Tuesday's video, but I will pop, um, I'll pop pictures here of my daughter and I. I made two of them and at, we absolutely are over the moon with our Cantons there. It's such a well-drafted pattern. It was, uh, I mean, is it an in-depth project? Yes, yes it is. But I hold your hand through every single step, folks. So, <laughs> so uh, you've got that added bonus of free sew along. Um, I put up all six of them. There's six different lessons um, on Monday last week when the pattern was released um, to go out with the pattern for cashmere. Um, I had some of you that checked in to make sure that that wasn't an accident because normally I put them out. You know, it would be six Sundays worth of sew along, um, which honestly helps me so much in getting content out when I have a sew along that can go multiple weeks um, because I can do all of that up front and then I have you know just two videos a week to kind of focus on but that was not the case with this one so I just wanted to kind of touch base a little bit about that pattern and if you didn't see that I have released that sew along it is six separate lessons walks you through um, the pattern is actually free with the all access um, tier of their club so if you already have the all access tier you got that pattern for free if you would like to have the all access um, tier. Uh, it's a yearly, it's a one a payment for the year. Um, I think it's discounted 20% on the website, but I have a code TOMCAT10 that gets you 25% off the original price. So it's an extra $9 off the discounted price that's already there. Um, if you're interested in doing that, I'm an all access member. I love cashmere patterns. I have been getting a real, a lot of really great value out of their club. Um, so yeah, if that's something you'd like to go take a look at, definitely use the code to get you um, an extra $9 off that um, annual payment or that annual price. But for today, you don't have to have the club to get the pattern though. You can buy the pattern um, right now and uh, that's all you want and you can go ahead and get that. Um, I believe someone said that the paper pattern wasn't gonna be available quite yet, but a paper pattern will be out. Um, it's in the full size range and stuff. But I had a lot of questions about fabric. So today, I thought we would talk a little bit more in depth about fabric for the Canton. Um, I made mine in a, like I mentioned, a pleather for myself and a leather for my daughter, which are obviously heavier fabrics. Um, I mean, it's great for this time of year, but now we're starting to go into warmer weather here in the Northern Hemisphere, supposedly. <laughs> Um, obviously leather and pleather will work great if you're going into fall and you're in the southern hemisphere but I wanted to talk about a few options if number one if pleather and leather scared you or number two you wanted something just a little bit different so I just wanted to talk about some fabrics you could use some things you could keep in mind and maybe some tweaks you could make um, to some of the zippers and stuff to kind of change the look and give yourself a little bit um, something different still a moto jacket but something a little different so I have a stack of fabrics here um, that I was just going to kind of talk you through. So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay. The first one I have, you're going to want um, heavier weight fabrics. So this means anything that is um, appropriate for bottom weight. So, and we'll look at some things. So like your denims, your heavier cotton twills, cotton canvas, wool coatings, um, suiting, like heavier, like suiting, um, you want stuff a little bit thicker. Um, anything that's classified as a bottom weight will work. So for instance, I have this crinkle, it's a crinkle cotton, um, but it's a bottom weight. It's a very thick crinkle cotton. Um, I made my, um, actually one of my models in my um, uh, digital classes, a pair of pants out of this, but <laughs> something like this would work great for the moto jacket. Now, the heavier the fabric, the more substantial zippers that you can use. So for instance, with my pleather and leather jackets, I used metal teeth zippers. I think I used size five. 
I think I used a size five metal zipper on both of those jackets, which is a little bit heavier duty um, metal zipper. But if you do something that's not quite as heavy as a leather or a pleather, you could easily use um, some of the decorative zippers even. Um, nylon zipper teeth. I mean, you could, you could do something with a fun pop of color. You could even, um, you know, something kind of this weight would be cool if you did like a um, I just immediately think of like a lime green, um, just regular nylon coil zipper um, for your uh, asymmetrical zipper that goes across the front as well as your pockets and your um, uh, sleeves. I think that would look so cute. And those are a lot easier to sew in because you don't have to worry about hitting your needle on um, metal teeth. Um, and you don't have to worry about like shortening. It's a lot easier when you use the, the nylon um, zippers. Anyway, I just thought about that. I'm like, oh my God, that'd be actually a really cool coat. And if I have enough, <laughs> maybe that's what I'll do. I love olive and lime green together. I love that combination. But yes, so anything like a heavier cotton would work really, really great for a more seasonally, seasonally appropriate, I say that, for the Northern Hemisphere. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you can do the pleather, the, your more traditional moto jacket uh, fabrics. All right, another option would be just like a heavier weight cotton twill. I actually just have this cotton twill here. This is for my son, just came in from Minerva. I'm making him a vest and a pair of pants out of this. Um, but yeah, anything that's like a bottom weight twill would be great for um, the moto jacket. Now, when you're using lighter fabrics like this, you definitely need to make sure that you're following the interfacing instructions and interfacing all of the areas that they want you to interface. Um, in fact, when you're using something just a little bit thinner, interfacing everything might not be a bad idea, just to give yourself a little more oomph. This is a line jacket though, so you do get a little bit of structure through that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would make a blazer out of this fabric, so I think I, you could definitely get away with a moto jacket. Again, I would use lighter weight zippers. Another option that would be really cool is a heavy weight linen. I'm also obsessed with this color. I kind of forgot I had this in my stash. I was just pulling some stuff to show you guys. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, this one's pretty. Ooh, look at this one. <laughs> I need to shop my stash more often. This is a heavyweight linen though from the fabric store down in New Zealand and um, it is wonderful. It makes great pants. Now this would make a little bit lighter weight um, moto jacket, but I think it could still be really wonderful. Um, you know, you could line it. I'm trying to think if you could leave it unlined, but I think you would still, you would want to line it just for the weight. Um, but you could use a lighter weight linen. If you were going to wear this like in the summer as a kind of a topper, as opposed to like a jacket, you could even line it in a lightweight linen. If you didn't need it to be slick to like get on over things, you know, very much, um, that could be really, really cool. Or you could just choose something like an acetate that would still be very breathable. Acetate is rayon based. So that's a very breathable, um, lining. Um, but yeah, and I would go for, I mean, aside from denim and maybe a maybe if you were using like um a cotton drill like a heavyweight cotton drill or a heavyweight cotton canvas i would still stick with the beefier zippers and maybe if you were using a beefier wool coating you could still stick with the metal zippers but most of these especially for spring and summer would be great with um, lighter like nylon zippers and those are a lot less scary so um, i walk you through the sew along though how to um, shorten and do all of that with the metal teeth zippers so i show you how to do all the hard stuff but it would be easier if you chose uh, nylon coil zippers um, another one I grabbed is white denim. How wonderful. It would be like a jean jacket, but with a twist because it's the moto style. And I think making it in a white denim would be such a beautiful jacket for the spring. Again, you could either, you could keep it safe and use, use like a metal, um, maybe a, a l smaller, like a maybe a size three. Is that right? Or do you go, up? yes, like a size three metal zipper maybe. Or you could just use white if you wanted to keep it all monochromatic. Or you could do some fun pop of color. There's a lot of really great zippers out there um, that you can find. A lot of specialty shops that sell some really cool zippers. Like what's it called? The Riri zippers, I think, that people use that have like the fun poles. And some of them have like the Swarovski crystal teeth or the rainbow. There's a lot of really cool ones out there. Even Amazon has some really cool options. But Or you can keep it simple and just go with like a silver or um, a uh, white, you know, if you're going that way. And then finally, actually these two fabrics, a viewer just sent me from her stash uh, to give me some dopamine sewing. And oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. But she sent me this beautiful wool bou boucle with the pink and orange. Is that not stunning? 
This would make such a fun moto jacket. I don't know that I'll use it for that though because um, I, I have a lot of moto jackets in my <laughs> wardrobe now. Um, so I'm probably good on moto jackets for a while, but this would make such a fun moto jacket. So any of those wool boucle, and by boucle, um, they're kind of tweedy, like they've got a big texture to them, a little bit looser weave. But as long as you're doing all of your interfacing on the inside, I think you'll be absolutely fine to use some of these looser weaves. You do want to use the lighter weight zippers on this though because because it's a looser weave heavier zippers can kind of pull it out of shape a little bit so use your lighter weight zippers and you could do something really fun with like a bright um, boucle suiting and this is kind of the same thing this is a um, silk and oh my gosh it's just absolutely stunning absolutely stunning it makes such a beautiful jacket um, and she even sent me the lining that she had bought to go with this which is very kind <laughs> very very kind um, but yeah even something like this so like um, it's a, probably a little more durable than the wool blend boucles. Um, and this isn't a boucle, this is just a woven silk um, fabric. But um, yes, that would make something wonderful. And how cool, especially getting ready to go into the Easter season, you know, a lot of times you'll make yourself a little jacket to go with the dress because who knows what Easter's gonna be like. But what if you had a matching moto jacket to go with your like sheath underneath or your fit and flare underneath because the canton comes with a crop length or the hip length. So if you had, oh, a fit and flare dress with a matching cropped moto jacket as opposed to like your typical jackets, like that would be kind of edgy and really, really cool. So just think about that. <laughs> that could be a lot of fun. <laughs> Again, if you're also going into the warmer months or the cooler months, you could um, choose something like a wool coating, something that's a little bit thicker. You could use the meatier zippers on something like that. Um, as far as interfacing, I've linked the interfacing that I use over there in the um, sew along so you can go have a look. But Palmer Pletch has some really good um, interfacing. Their Perfect Fuse is really great, as does Fashion Sewing Supply. Um, they've got really great fusible interfacings as well. Those are kind of my two favorite go-tos when it comes to the fusibles for um, all sorts of things, but for this jacket. I'm gonna pop a link up to the sew along up here for part one, and then I'll link all the parts uh, down in the description box below if you'd like to go take a look at that and uh, see if it's something that you wanna tackle. Anyway, I hope this was some good inspiration and gave you some food for thought that moto jackets don't have to be leather, they don't have to be pleather, they can be all sorts of different fabrics, and um, it's a, a real fun project, and they're so classic. A good moto jacket will stay in your wardrobe for, for a long time, forever and ever. And um, yeah, you'll be wearing it for ages to come. I'll be wearing that red moto jacket forever. It's in my color palette. It's my signature color. When will I not wear that? <laughs> I'm so glad that I got that made up. That's going to get worn so much. All right, guys, that is all I have for today. Um, okay, so Tuesday, make sure you're signed up for the newsletter because tomorrow another, another newsletter comes out and I will have the spring um, capsule wardrobe PDF in that newsletter. So if that's something that you look forward to each season, you'll definitely wanna make sure that you're signed up for that newsletter, which you should be if you've gotten them before. But um, also, so Tuesday and then Tuesday's video will be me talking about my spring plans um, for spring. So spring plans for spring. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and then on Friday next week, I have a sew the look that I have done with my mother. I did a sew the look for her um, and we, uh, for an event that she had to go to. So I've got that coming up next Friday. So if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, you're going to want to do that. You don't want to miss any of the content I have coming up. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday and I will see you guys again on Tuesday. Bye.